Hello everyone, welcome to JS Gigs and my name is Deepak. Here in this tutorial, we are going to be talking about SW push, basically the push notification in the PWA. So in order to implement the push notification, in order to have received the notification from the server, Angular provides a, its, its own service that's called SW push. So let me now quickly take you to a browser window wherein I have opened the angular.dev documentation and then let's just quickly read what push notification is all about and what angular documentation has to say about it, right? So push notifications are commonly a compelling way to engage users through the power of service worker. Notification can be delivered to a device even when your application is not in focus. The angular service worker enables the display of push notification and handling the notification click events. So uh, this is the definition of a push notification which is displayed here on the Angular documentation. And if you just quickly scroll down to this point where you, uh, you can see that the notification click handling, uh, the notification click handling also basically displays a kind of notification that uh, your application receives and then what it really does when, when you click on that particular notification, right? So if you look closely here at the notification data structure, you would notice that the outer property is called notification. Inside that you have a title and then a data. And inside the data, you have another property called on action click. And in on action click, you would basically define what is the action you want user browser to perform when user clicks on the, that particular action. So there are the, these are the four uh, type of operations essentially available for your um, on push or your push notifications. So what are those? The first one is open window. The other one is focus, last focused or open, which basically focuses the last focused client. If there is no client open, then it opens a new tab in the specified URL. The third action is the navigation last focused or open, which means that it focuses the last focused client and navigates it to the specified URL. If there, are, if there is no client open, then it opens a new tab at the specified URL, right? So this is the difference between focused last focused or open and then navigation last focused or open. So the difference between focused last focused or open and navigation last focused or open is that if in case of focus last open, it says that if there is no client open, then opens a new tab in the specified URL. However, in case of navigate last focus or open, it basically navigates to the specified URL. If there is no client open, then it opens a new tab in the specified URL to, to navigate to a specified URL. How, however, focus last focus open does not really navigate to the specified URL if your 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 client is open it only takes you to a specified url when your client is not open and then that's when it opens it in a new tab and takes you to a specified url right the fourth action it performs a fourth kind of operation it can perform is a send a simple get request to a specified url meaning when you click on a particular uh, particular push notification it basically calls a, a, a specified url and then brings back the result and will try to show you the result that you desire to see Right. So these are the four operations that it can perform. Right. So four operation would basically sit inside on action click. Here you can see that it is a default operation URL and things like that. Right. And now let's just quickly go and see what action properties are. So here in the action property, you can you can notice that action offers a way to customize how the user can interact with their notification. Right. Using the action property, you can define a set of available actions. Each action is represented as an action button that the user can click to interact with the notification in addition using the on action click property on the data object you can tie each action on an operation to be performed when corresponding action button is clicked right so here um, you can notice that inside the notification object you have a title and then you have an actions and in actions you can define all of this at the same time um, if you look at the notification click handling uh, object that's been provided over here says that notification inside that a data property and the data property has um, basically the data property has four different operations available or uh, using which um, your browser can or your application can determine what action really needs to be performed and what was those for open window focus last focus or open navigate last focus or open and send request right now looking at the actions now actions is another property available within the notification object as you can see over here so it has again the title and then in the action and then within the action you have multiple other actions available which is like you have basically two properties essentially one is the action and the other one is a title so what does it really do using the action property you can define a set of available actions each action is represented as an action button that the user can click on and interact with the notification right 
so if you look at this one so uh, if you if you see over here so it says action foo and then inside the data on action on action click you have a foo object mapped over here so in this case the moment it, this particular action is triggered and then it says the title would be shown as open action tab and then what action would be performed is basically mapped here on the data property inside the on action click on inside the on action click property which is uh, so this action would be mapped to one on one here on the data right so similarly the bar would be here bars would be here others would be mapped to default so which is just the opening a window right if an action is does not uh, have a corresponding on action entry then the notification is closed as w as w notification clicks is notified on existing clients right now uh, we have seen what these on push notification service or sw push notification sw push service does so let's just try to implement that in the vs code now let me quickly take you to a vs code and then here we will start writing the and implementing the sw push service so in order to uh, implement this i i believe the best way is basically to do that in the app component so here at the root of your project you have the app component inside the app component i'm going to be basically importing the sw uh, push service and then the, the sw push service would be used to basically no, be, receive the notification so let me write it down here w push all right so let me just import this as well and right in the top so in order to import this i need to oh. so let me now write it down here in the constructor or rather let me do that in the init so ng on init And declare it void also one in it here so this dot sw push dot now look closely over here right so sw push service has these method and properties available out of the box right so what are these first is in is enabled the second is message messages rather Third is notification clicks and then the fourth is request subscription which is also a type of a method and then the fifth fourth property or the, the fifth property is sw push subscription emit the current active uh, push subscription associated to the service worker registered or null in case there is no subscription available right so it basically provides you these five um properties and methods in together so first is uh, basically one is the method and if if your service worker is enabled then this is enabled is going to be passing it as true and then in case if you have any messages available in the push so this message messages property is the property that you wouldn't really need to implement right and in case of notification clicks like how you uh like, like if you want to be notified when user clicks on those particular notification these are this is the uh, property that you will have to subscribe to and then as you can see in the documentation is uh, as well that emits a payload of a service of a received push notification message as well as the action the user interacted with if no action was present the action properties contains an empty string right the um the other thing is um the request subscription so in this case basically it is going to be requesting a subscription with the web push notification and after requesting receiving the service permission um and right and then, then this is basically going to be a promise it returns a promise so meaning you will have to uh, do a dot then method in order to receive a message or receive a value from this subscription method the other thing is the subscription property which is also a type of an observable so it emits a cur all current push subscription associated with the service worker registration and in case if there are no subscription available in the service worker it is going to be returning the null and then the fourth is obviously the unsubscribe meaning uh, like you uh, you really need to unsubscribe to uh, you know let's say if you don't want to be notified in some other scenario then the unsubscribe is a method that you would have to make use of right so in our case we are going to be making use of a message property which is also a type of an observable so in this case we will have to basically subscribe to it and just write down thing like this and in case of in case of a message let me just put a console log here and then i'm just going to be 
uh, you know, writing the message right in as and when I receive it, right? MSG message. And let's just put this. This could be of uh, any complex data structure as defined by Angular, as we had seen in the previous uh, just, just a few minutes ago. So let me define it as any because it can contain basically any of it. So it looks like some error here in the component. So yep, on and it we need to import it right at the top. So let me do that here. Right, so this should be done. Implements on in it. Yep, there is a spelling mistake over here. Let me just fix this on in it. I think now we are pretty much done. All right, so we have compiled it. It's running properly. Let me just take a build quickly and then start testing this, right? So let us just uh, compile for a minute. And I think I'll have to build it as well. So let me close this. Let's clear. PM run build. At the moment, the application has built successfully. So let me just kill this and start a server once again. So PX port 18. All right. So let me just start this once again and go to the browser window to see how this behaves. So let's just quickly go to the Chrome, open a tab over here, and then let's just write down localhost 8080. Put an inspect here. Let me refresh this bit. All right. So there are two things over here, which is fine. Um, uh, now, now there is uh, there is another thing that I want to talk to you about, which is basically how you can test the service worker and the push notification in the browser itself. So earlier, this 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 particular push uh, block wasn't available in the start of many many, many years ago. So now um, Chrome has provided this push notification uh, message body and then message input box, wherein you could write down a properly defined a push message and then send the push and then whatever is the push mechanism available in the browser you would receive it uh from the service worker as we can see that the ngsw hyphen worker.js is registered with us so you know you can see that the date is today's date and time is correctly as i'm recording the video over here so let me just do a push and there you go as you can see that the the push service uh because we have written a notification if we have captured this particular notification and also written a block of code to basically console log that particular message whatever we receive so you now you can see that it has received the data and an auction click and things like that right so now let me quickly take you to take you back to the vs code and here are the vs code now let's just put all right so now we have seen that how push notification is uh how how sw push service in angular really behaves and it uh, captures the notification the moment you send it now basically you are allowed to uh, do any action that you wish to now now let me take you quickly back to vs code once again and i'll show you what exactly we would do from these this particular service now if you closely look at all of these methods and properties available like first of all request subscription it says that uh, subscribe to web push notification after requesting receiving user permission right and then if you look at the other uh, methods and properties available like particularly for this one right notification clicks and message and is enabled right so all of these have a different um, uh, work in in this area and then you can basically combine and mix and match with various different things in order to bring back the results you desire right so uh that's that's pretty much it ladies and gentlemen for for this episode and thank you very much for listening in and i'm going to be um closing this session and i'm going to be starting another one wherein we would try to basically set up firebase with our angular application and then we will try to receive messages from the firebase services and then we'll also try to notify user and do various different actions thank you very much for listening in ladies and gentlemen it's an absolute pleasure to host these episodes for you and I'll I'll be doing a Firebase integration with my application in the next episode. So please stay tuned and keep don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also hit the bell icon in, in case you have not done it already. So thank you very much once again and I'll see you in the next one.